checked your batteries lately in your smoke detectors because it is daylight savings time and PSA. It's you time have, to change your batteries and your smoke detectors. We do have a lot of smoke detectors in our house, believe it or not. Well, we're about to test them. Yeah, hopefully it doesn't make it up to the second floor. That's all I hope. I mean, you know, we lost a cat or something, it might be all right. How do I get to the line? Oh, here it is. Look at that. Boom. Oh, yeah, we got to do the music. This is the OKS Hunter podcast. Never pass on shooter bucks. If that's just me in the freezer. It's your tag. You hunt how you want. This is OKS Hunter. Let's light it up or burn it down. I don't know. Something's gonna happen here. We are <laughs> we are gonna we're smoking some whiskey bourbon. We're not we're setting it on fire to add some smoky flavor to our bourbon. It sounded weird. We're smoking, and I know how that last episode went last week with Greg talking about donkey butter. So <laughs> I'm gonna get it all too excited over here. Cheapers. <laughs> it's not like it was my birthday or anything. <laughs> but this is a birthday gift for my wife. So I said, what better Time to try it out than in the podcast studio. So why not? It says leave it there for about 20 seconds. And then, you know, I think you use this little thing here to uh, take this one up and put that one in. That one be yours. It's both cherry, cherry wood. Cherry wood. So let's see what happens here. I'll uh, switch the camera. It almost seems like we need a little more smoke in there. I think that might be our, I mean, what do you, I don't know, man. I'm just going to burn myself, I think. So, welcome to the podcast. This is the OKS Hunter podcast coming at you from Oconomowoc, Wisconsin. We're down here in the Cat Pee basement, as it were, in our fun studio here, lighting things on fire. Give you guys that overhead view for those of you tuning in on the YouTube or wherever you're tuning in from. Move the extinguisher out of the way. Let's just get a little bit away from the computer, (laughs) and then we'll cheers this and get the show started. Because we do have a guest eagerly awaiting to join, but I'm sure he is very curious to see if this burn down in here or not oh that's definitely a good fire you got going there Greg. yeah man Whew, look at all that smoke in there i'd say that's looking pretty smoky oh yeah very nice sir a little cherry wood over the uh bourbon well i mean has it been 20 seconds yet no <laughs> i'm so impatient anywho uh we Things have changed here a little bit too. Um, we've we've moved half half rack and us have gone. Uh, I wouldn't say different directions. Just uh, part of they're, they're growing now. and we're growing and everyone's growing and everything is good. But uh, part of their growth involved them uh, spending a lot of money to do some of that growth, and uh, now we're doing our thing. So we love those guys over there. I'm just taking a video of Greg taking his top off. I mean, of the drink. Keep it on. Keep your shirt oh, on there, okay. guy. Anywho, um, obviously happy to be partnered with Latitude as one of our partners on the show. Uh, excited for all the things coming on the pike with those fellas. I think they're still running some fun stuff with their knee pads, the new ones that they got going on. So check that out. Use code OHP. Someone just message us on Go Wild, uh, another former partner, partner who's actually growing as well, uh, and said, I've saved so much money using the OHP code. I just want to say thank you so much. I don't think you realize how much it's helped. And I was like, no. I can't say I have realized I don't get a lot of that feedback. So no, it's cool don't. to hear that. Thanks for the note. Um, and then Spartan Forge. Here. Cheers to that. Cheers to this. Does it taste smoky? Not really. Not really. No. It tastes like I drank from a campfire a little bit. All right. Well, so good to know. Yeah. So maybe the ones at the bars are better, but it's fun. It's fun to light some stuff on fire. Use code OHP. Make sure you go to SpartanForge.ai and, and sign up there and not on like the app. Go to the website and do it, and then you'll be good to go. And Rack Hub. If you don't know what Rack Hub is, you're sleeping, and you got to wake up. Ain't that right, TJ? Uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for, for jumping in here. I was supposed to get someone a link, 
And uh, now that link has seemed to have disappeared. You shit the bed, didn't you? So uh, <laughs> let's try. That's why I've... guests can share this stream. Uh, refresh. Nope, I don't want to do this little music. Here. Nope, don't want to do that. Um, well, I don't know where the link went. This is a new thing that Restream tried to do. So just leave it to me to mess it all up because uh, that's who we're dealing with here. <laughs> But I'm not seeing a way to, it says I can just grab it, but I don't see it anywhere. Hmm. Uh, this will immediately invalidate your current invite link. I don't want to do that because I'm afraid to like kick you out. So I guess uh, that part is uh, no bueno. I don't know. It's a new thing. And it's like if I don't catch it, like the moment it pops up, it disappears like a butterfly in the wind. So. That's it. Otherwise, I think you could just grab it from wherever. If you grab it from YouTube, um, if you share our live video from YouTube, which I can help with here, I think that would be sufficient, actually. I think that's what it means. Because it just says anyone can share your stuff. So let me uh, grab this real quick, copy, and I will share this over to our chat. And hopefully that does the trick. Um, there it goes. So anyway, sorry about all that. Uh, listeners and everybody, but uh, TJ, thanks for for jumping in here. This is perfect timing because we're, I don't know, about to be in like we're kind of in the throes of shed season. If we're like, I'm, I mean, I couldn't find any, but it doesn't mean it's not a thing. <laughs> but to be fair, there's an awful lot of them still running around with both sides on their heads. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Yeah, you have some trail cams out there. I just went out blind looking for stuff, and I didn't find anything. Uh, but my dog's got some exercise, so that was nice. Um, well, TJ, tell us about yourself. Uh, we've known each other for quite some time now in various uh, formats, but if you want to take the stage and talk about Rack Hub uh, in an elevator pitch and shed season and sum that up, and then we'll kind of springboard into the, the rest of the topic here. Okay, yeah, well, thank you. Greg, Eric, for having us on. We, uh, I say us, me today, but representing Rack Up Shed Season Gang. Um, like what you guys do and what your, where your heart's at in it. So, yeah, thanks. Um, Rack Up. So we started, that's been 2018 is when we started. Started small, started slow, didn't know a thing about a thing. Just knew that we wanted to get antlers up on the wall because um, that product didn't necessarily exist at the time. Um so yeah, we rack up premium antler display. We say premium just because we put a lot of effort and energy into making this product that'll hold, you know, your your spike antlers, whether it's a kid's first deer all the way up to um, deer like behind me. That's a 200 some inch or big up to five, 600 inch deer. Um, and it'll hold all of them. So we we spent a lot of time, effort, energy um, into, into solving that. And um yeah, that, that was a start in 18. Shed season is um, essentially just a community for antler lovers. Get the fam out, get your buds outside, and um, maybe just, Eric, give your dog some exercise. If you don't find any, that's okay. You got out and made some memories. Um, yes, sir. <laughs> but, um, no, it's we got we got a lot of good folks over here on, on the team, and um, we just we're having fun, and we're so thankful for – orders over all the years um and we're we still feel like we're just getting started so it's fun well when you say we were working hard to address this concern like this problem what have you who is we or was it you or you were speaking we because like your wife is supporting you because like <laughs> for those that don't know and and i know you're about as humble as the the most humble pie that's ever been served um you're a hell of a, an engineer. And I think by trade, you've helped a lot of brands on the back end, EADS designs and, and things of that nature. So it might be worth talking about that just for two seconds because you're talking about this thing holding, you know, 500 inches worth if it's an elk and things like larger animals. Because if it's whitetail, maybe, I mean, any whitetail in this room is not going to be over 130. Uh, <laughs> so I think it'd be cool to get a little bit more context about you and like, the we of that, um, I always say we too, and I've been saying that since day one, even though it was at one point, it was just me, but it just felt like, oh, no, there's a we, there's more of me doing this, right? Kind of thing. Yeah, no, I, 
it, it's definitely a we. There's always somebody that's helping you, whether it is support or gives you a contact that takes you to the next thing, answers a question for you, runs an errand for you. It, it's always we. Um, but uh, so I growing up did excavating, loved and we built things all the time. Um, my parents were great in letting us just, hey, go have fun. Here's some power tools. Don't hurt yourself. We built a giant tree house. My brother and I that connected to like 20 or 25 trees, I forget, but it was essentially a mansion oh, okay. when we were, awesome. I think I was, oh, I forget the, um, the, all the details, but let's just say he was nine, I was 11 or he was 11, I was 13, somewhere in there. But we were always able to get our hands on stuff, try things, break things, fail. Um, but it kind of built this, um, I guess, base for being curious always being curious, maybe there's a better way to do something. Or if there was, there's a problem, there's got to be a way to solve it. And I ended up uh, going to Purdue to study industrial design. It's essentially product design. So you work alongside with engineers to like the, the industrial designer designs the, the aesthetic, the look of it. So the outside of a car, for example, or a chair, and then you work with engineers to tuck the guts in and make the thing work. I dabble in a little bit of both design and engineering, um, but that's where I went. And when I was working at uh, the companies called Delta Fawcett in Indy, Indianapolis, um, I was always wanting to get into the hunting industry. So I did some consulting work, uh, went to ATA, had a mentor that took me there. I did some consulting work uh, for NAP, New Archery Products back in the day. And that was kind of my pinky toe in the door, if you will. Nice. Always wanted to get in there full time. Wasn't really an opportunity. I also wanted to strengthen my my skills, learning from a giant team, big corporation, if you will, how engineering worked with marketing, worked with design, worked with sourcing, supply chain, all the all the pieces to the puzzle. So um, very fortunate to have that opportunity, work with a lot of talented folks um, there and ended up starting answering your question here, Eric, the we with my cousin, Jason Eads uh, for Rack Hub. We, he's one of the best deer hunters that I know. He guides for um, a place there in Illinois. But if, his, if he was hunting all of the hunts that he guided, his wall would look like no one else's that you've ever seen. He's so talented at it, but we would always keep in touch on Hey, what do you think about this idea or that idea? And he would always be supportive. So we started Rack Hub in the beginning and eventually it just worked um, where he focused on family. Like we got the idea up and going and he needed to focus on family and his job. Uh, wasn't really into the, the computer stuff and growing the business because he's got such a skill set and hands on and guiding. So he stuck with that path and we kept going this way and we still are in touch often and he's still supporting us. So that that was the we that started and then there's a list of folks like a uh, russell walden <laughs> and a brad beaver and adam perry brandon williams josh and trevor and tons of people my wife like my parents you i mean i can't name them all that have supported us since since starting it so um that that's the we behind the start that's what you're saying is it takes a lot to get a product takes, to takes market. a village <laughs> takes a village yeah. it does and everybody's support is just you know it's fuel for the fire oh yeah well you guys know you get a good review or somebody chimes in saying you guys are crushing it love what you talked about today or you know this really gets me going in the morning or whatever comments it keeps you going it does yeah positive support is uh is always yeah needed. it just gives you more of a reason to get up and get after yeah it. for sure you guys have a positive message too, like to just to speak about. So just thank you for the context and the background. I think it's good to kind of set the stage that 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 this isn't some fly by the seat of your pants cool product. And I don't and I say that on purpose because it, it is a cool product. But sometimes when you got people like Brad Beaver working on it, you get to the cool kids club a little bit quicker perceptionally, you know, because he's so good. Um, and I don't want people to think that this product is out of reach for them, uh, you know. You already held up a spike and you've talked about that. Like I have the one antler, the, literally the only antler I've ever found shed hunting, which is behind Greg. You can leave it up there, Greg. But I've, I've had, I've, I found that during gun season of all things too. 
<laughs> and I and I was freaking out. And so like that is a pretty important memory for me. I was out with all my pals the day before the rifle opener, doing what we do every year in the woods and came across that. And it was a big old deal. And so here it is on the wall. And I, I'm talking about it right now. Like I wouldn't be talking about it right now if we're up by the coffee bar upstairs or, you know, not being displayed in a in such a cool way. So, you know, it's a cool product, but you guys, you've been doing this for some time. You put a lot of thought and ingenuity quite literally into this product. So you have the, maybe just talk about the products a little bit on the, on the rack hub side of it. You have the RH1 and RH2. I'm familiar with those because I have one, the RH1 being one antler, the RH2 would be two. But when I shared that uh, as a, I think it was a real or something, a taxidermist um, commented immediately and he was pretty riled up. Because he, I was saying this is a good price point if you don't have the money to do a shoulder mount or maybe it's not worthy of the, you know, financial prowess that goes with a shoulder mount or what have you. Uh, I mean, my shoulder mount was $800 uh, for one of them. I think 600 for the other, 700 for the other, 725 850 um, That's a lot of money. I'm not saying it's not worth it because it is. I obviously did it, but like... I'm going to display a shed I found in the woods. That's different. If I like maybe a year amount is a way to go or, you know, whatever. I just want to say that that tax has brought up a good point where he's like, Hey, I don't want to get like edge out of the conversation. Like there's still a place for me too. And you know, we're expensive because prices are going up. The economy is what it is. Help me understand. Yeah. Do you make products that support taxidermists as well? that they can use in their mounts? Yeah, yeah. So there's a lot there, Eric, and I'd love to comment on it. Um, so real, real quick for clarity, this is the RH2. Um, for those that can't see behind me, it's got two ball joints here. You tap in an insert and we're just showing this on a spike to show that it, it's so minimal that you knew which podcast. You were coming <laughs> <out>. <laughs> hey, no, look, look well, I was going to get into this later, but here's the shed. My daughters and, and I just found um, this last weekend. So, Hey, they, they all matter and they're harder to find. So everyone knows it. Um, but RH2, Eric, you got the RH1 in there and in, in, in on your wall. So what I will say is we, when it comes to taxidermy and we, we don't want to take business away and that's not why we started. It's another option. It's another tool, just like right. a Euro mount. Everybody's got their own style for, for us. It was primarily started as sheds. Like there's no way to display sheds like it was on the deer's head and you can orient it and get the right spread and everything to really appreciate it. Cause when it's laying down, you can't appreciate the size. Um, you can't walk around and see. So, and, and it wasn't permanent. So with ours, with the ball joint, the insert living in the antler goes on to, to the ball and stem. We got a hex feature to save that and double lock tech and all the features and such. But the point is you can, you can mount it quickly and display it quickly it's very diy friendly you don't have to go through a taxidermist taxidermists generally are very busy and backed up that is a that's a fair assumption for all around me i don't know in your state or your local taxidermist but they're always years behind so this is something you can do right now with a charge drill we even send the drill bits with our products you even send the drill we bit. send the drill bits that was with something. our products because yeah. We, when Jason and I started it, we put ourselves in the customer's shoes. If I'm receiving this thing and I'm so excited to mount this memory, you know, whether it was a, a shed we just found with the fam or I cut off some antlers off my first daughter's deer and you're looking around fumbling through and you let your neighbor borrow your five sixteenths bit, you're going to be, you're going to be a little hurt or ticked, um, borderline wanting to cuss because you can't get it up on the wall. And it, it, we did not want that to be the experience because it would reflect on us and our brand and the product. So we just wanted to ship it with sharp drill bit goes out with every product. So you don't have to worry. Um, and you can mount them right now. So, uh, and with taxidermists, what I was mentioning is we've got some taxidermists that we treat them as a dealer. So they'll buy the product and then offer it to their customers. And then we've also partnered with Antler Tech to answer your last question you asked, Eric, on we do have a skull plate that can go underneath the hide with ball joints in it so you can remove the antlers. So it's been 
which is from a transportation standpoint. So this is that that last part with Antler Tech and the removing of yep. antlers. We, <laughs> I think it was like the day or week of Derek getting his 170 plus inch Illinois buck back. And we were like, hey, well, we're going to throw it in this trailer and drive to Iowa for the Iowa Deer Classic. It felt pretty sketchy. I was really nervous and concerned that if we damaged his deer, he would like never talk to me yep. again. Um, and then similarly, then the two weeks later, I got my 130 over here back, which is my biggest buck to date. Also a, a hell of a memory, if you know the story. Um, one that will never be forgotten. I was like, shit, this is how Derek felt two weeks ago. Like, I'm about to put this thing in a trailer. And it felt so been, it would have felt a little nice to take the antlers off, potentially. I mean, a lot of the arts and like the, the folds of the fur and stuff, but e even that like big elk or caribou. You can't fit half those things. You can't fit those through a doorway. Those have to come off. So I don't know how that's been done before your product has come along. Obviously, there must be something out there, but I, I think this is a workable solution for that as well. Yeah, there's there's a one of the tried and true methods is use a square tube with a solid bar stock square. So it slides onto itself, but you got to bore out the antler quite a bit and go pretty deep. Mm -hmm. So it needs to be somebody skilled. Uh, to do that, not have the confidence to use a big drill bit or some sort of a spade bit to auger it out. And then you're using some sort of an epoxy or a Bondo or whatever adhesive to it, install that. And then you got dry time. You got to make sure it's perfect. If it's not, then you got to cut some stuff up and start over. So with ours, with the ball joint, you really can't screw it up because you got the ball joint on there. You just tweak it or move it to make it perfect in your eyes or according to measurements or whatever. So that's, that's where it's, it's, you offer the speed, less labor for the taxidermist, peace of mind. And then what's really cool is if you buy more inserts, um, I'll just show you here. Uh, you buy more inserts, you got different antlers. Swap different things out. Yep. And just swap it out. So here's, here's the, the small deer antler inserts. That's what's in the, that spike that I've been holding up. So that's what's tucked up in there hiding. Yeah. And yeah, it's that's... friction fit. So you don't need any glues or adhesives. You just simply tap it in. Um, it's sized yeah. appropriately. It's a metal, it's a metal insert, yeah. right? Not plastic. Yeah. It's, um, it's aluminum and we anodize it on the larger one for the XL products. Let me hold these up so you guys can see a comparison real quick. Here's the RH2 for deer, all of deer. Here's the RH2 mm -hmm. XL for elk, moose. Oh, that's a lot larger. There's there's a difference. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there is an actual difference between those animals, too. Yeah, there's your old, old winkle's a little bit bigger than, uh, you know, yep. the shooter bucks we, we see frequently around here. Yep. So, and this base is all anodized aluminum, too, it feels like. And it's pretty nice that it's countersunk for like a drywall or a deck type screw that can hold some weight absolutely yeah we want it to be a sleek finish and one little thing that we did starting that company that that actually is very important to us you'll notice all our brackets point uphill it's because you're elevating that memory that trophy so yeah it's that, yeah. it's um and then we have i don't want to deep dive into the features because it, it really only concerns the people that care about it i guess but we all we have the ball the ball and stem it's machined out of one piece steel on both products that's because we did not want that to break you press fit them you bolt them together you weld them together there's finishing issues there's cause for a failure point so we machine that out of one piece um but the ball joint always points north of 90 degrees so even if this was loose um or something you forgot to tighten it your antler's not gonna it's not gonna go full droop on full you. Full droop. Yeah, that, that should have been the feature, not <laughs> north of 90. Yeah. Full droop. <laughs> yeah. Here's uh oh, Levi. Levi just commented he's got a 400 inch elk shed. So he love this for so heck yeah, go. Levi. We um one of our videos on the channel, uh, we just revised all our channel, so it's new as of like December. We just uh, uploaded them, but we tested a 440 inch, 440 inch elk. He had a 12 inch base and a 13 inch base. One antler weighed wow. 19 pounds, the other weighed 17. Just an absolute Jeez. ridiculous giant elk. So that was fun to test on the XL. 
That's crazy. Here's the size comparisons on the inserts, though, because I showed the other one earlier. This is the XL, and here's the deer insert. So we... Oh, yeah. Yeah, drastic. We constrained ourselves to using a half-inch drill bit for the XL. Anything larger than that is very intimidating, especially if you're, you don't use a drill every day. And we wanted you to be able to use any drill and be able to chuck it up. So um, we just worked backwards from that. Like we can't go bigger than a half inch bit. So we stuck with that diameter, that size and worked backwards on designing the, the insert uh, for the XL for elk for, like I said, moose. Stag. It's an insane amount of thought and consideration on something seemingly simple. We, that's how it is in design generally um, simple is is more strenuous takes more time because it's got to be right and if it's not yeah, it's there's apple for you it, i guess the simpler the product design the more work that went into it to tuck the guts if you will which i wish yep. i could do with myself over yeah here. that doesn't work that way eric yeah i need a girl what do they call a girdle yeah i don't know if they wear those anymore they're called i think it's spanx or, or less of that stuff spanx. yeah spanx, yeah, spanx. Mm -hmm. oh yeah it we spent over a year just on the insert getting that right because we did not we were not going to be shipping epoxies or adhesives with the product it, it had to be no, that's... had to be friction fit it had to work without any additives and it had to be metal all of those things so it took a while yep i love seeing greg i mean ever since you said faucet company he <laughs> i know up, so. it... Well, really we're enjoying this. Right? We've chatted before on DMs and text and stuff. Yeah, yeah, DMs before. So I come from the plumbing and heating industry, and I I work for a manufacturer doing tech support and product training and helping you know work bugs out of products. You know, throw our product against the competitors and give the report back to the engineer, and the engineer can you know, make his adjustments. So it's kind of cool to be able to tweak around and play with that stuff. It is. I mean, it starts. It starts as simple as an idea in your basement, and you start putzing around with maybe lesser grade materials, whether it's plastic or wood. Well, or honestly, enough. Than last whatever. last week, we had uh, a product company on too, the bow hitch, and he's like, "I sketched the uh, the drawing on a napkin, and I that was how I made the first one. I put that on some sheet metal, and I cut, and that was the first. It's just cool to hear some of these stories. I mean, it's not hunting season right now so we can have these episodes but yours is fitting because if we kind of rally into shed season a little bit um there's a contest we haven't discussed yet that we we've been discussing it on our show the last couple weeks that there's one coming but this seems like a good a time as any to switch gears and talk about that let the cat out of the bag <laughs> huh yeah um and i have some notes on my screen here that i pulled up so i wouldn't botch it because if i don't have the notes i will totally mess everything up i was trying to recant it to tyler and my ride home from work i was like i don't know the details it's in my email but i'll, I'll i have to pull that up <laughs> <laughs> so but luckily i'm talking to you and you're very detail oriented which is great because as someone that's designing products and engineering them um it, that that detail comes through so you know the the collab though is with shed season and tj for the love of pete correct me at any point if i start to misspeak about this or represent something inaccurately but um the giveaway total value of what we're gonna collaborate on with shed season okay hunters five hundred dollars in total prize you know worth um okay hunter is gonna throw in 150 dollars worth of our stuff and we have some of those details at some point we'll put out there but it's all related to shooter buck and sheds and all that jazz um Shed Season and Rack Hub are going to put in $350 worth of merch and or gift card. So the $350 plus $150, those of you know that uh, I'm not good at math. I'm pretty sure that comes out to $500. Bucks. <laughs> One would hope. Kept your shoes on, so that's a, that's a plus. Um, and, and it's easy because I, we, don't, I don't, we don't do a lot of contests. I just don't do a bunch of them because they tend to be a bit of the, a pain in the butt to to manage. And we remember that one before. we did just, how many years back, and that was just that got was to, a lot of work. It, it was successful, which was great, but then it grew to a level of like, man, this is harder than managing, yeah, whatever other stuff. Um, so essentially, um, what we want people to do is to find the smallest shed, <laughs> and it, it doesn't totally have to be, but it's, just use the hashtag 
okayest shed in your shed hunting content uh, that you're putting out to IG, Instagram. And from March 5th through the 14th, that's today through the 14th, so short run, um, but effective hopefully for everybody, you can post that out. And any of those hashtags that we comb through at the end of this thing will be drawn to, to win. I think I got it all correct. Sounded good to me. Yeah, that's everything we discussed. If I miss something, we'll let you know. But we'll include the the contest details when we post this episode tonight to our IG channel. Um, with our podcast, you know, image that goes out to represent the episode, we'll include it there. We'll do some follow up stuff as well to make sure everyone knows, understands what it is, because not everyone that follows us might be listening to the podcast. So we'll make it abundantly apparent and obvious that there is indeed a contest going on. And then if you use the hashtag, which should be easy to remember, okayest shed, um, that will enter you into the contest. Love it. And they are harder to find. So good luck. I mean, they are. They definitely are. Um, yeah, okay as shed. We'll push it out on our G- IG as well. Um, but yeah, it be fun to see what you guys pick. For for yeah, who we I don't know. Yeah. Um for for winning, I don't know. It depends on who who I hope it's not a dud. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's I hope the content is more than okay. <laughs> like you know, I was out shed hunting. Uh, on my, I went on my birthday. That was something I wanted to do is just get outside a little bit. So I went super early before like the house was, uh, you know, buzzing with chaos and uh, took the dogs, did some exercise, and we were going to have a, a bit of a busy day. And it was just so nice to be out. And just that in itself, you could say, okay, a shed if it's a branchler. You know, I, it, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to find a shed. It'd be better if you did. I think that might, I don't know if that's, I don't, I'm not going to go on record saying that's going to improve your odds, but it might be more relevant to the content, you know, that mm-hmm. we're trying to, see out there but certainly just going out and spending time outdoors and look for that stuff is part of it too i found a balloon found lots of rubs found lots of poop <laughs> didn't find any sheds well that tells you that the deer were using it you know especially if the poop looked fairly fresh within a couple months old um, tells you that they're using that area and you know knowing where that area is they should be because food is not far away yeah yeah it was right by an egg field so i felt like well it could have been good it's a property that i don't think a lot of people are thinking about so who knows um but shed season is a pretty cool thing i mean do you do you care to talk about that at all because there's a lot of fodder and excitement around shed season i've put out a couple articles on our our site uh about like the rise in popularity of shed hunting and just you know how to maybe even go find sheds but like don't listen to me I, I, do the things that i wouldn't do because like i suck at it but like if i didn't suck at it maybe these things would work um you know shed seasons the, the, i can't even begin to think about how many people are tagging you guys in, in shed season and how big that has gotten we're wearing these shed season hats that are pretty damn cool yeah actually. i was gonna compliment you on yours Greg. greg's yours, yours is nice too but um you missed it's not as cool as the camel one i missed out just on the, missed the memo you can just rob <laughs> eric's if you want I mean, you I could, think you can you take could. him. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah. Shed season. Yeah. Okay. Got anyway. Know. Yep. Um, y- yeah. You'd have to ask Dwayne, Mr. Dwayne Jones. Um, we call him Indiana Jones, but. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah. So he is, he lives, he resides here near me, but he, uh, he's the one that drives that for the most part. And um, he is getting blown up on the dms and comments and all the things so he we love it we love seeing what's going on out there and it's i think it's grown because you know hunting has become more of a challenge you guys have talked about on many podcasts probably part of your your mission is uh it can it can get can suck the fun out of it with with all the things these days um and and with shed season you can remove all of that you know, anybody can go, you can go by yourself. You can go with your whole family. You can be loud. You can be quiet. You can do it the way that you want to do it. Heck, you can just drive around if there's trails or whatever. You don't have to get out and walk and it's a way to get outside. And like you said earlier, just make a memory. You know, you're, you're going to find some things. You're going to learn some things. Um, you're going to remember it. So it's just, it's a great time of the year to get outside. Uh, you've been potentially cooped up all through winter. Um, and, it's fun. It's just fun. And it's definitely growing in popularity across the nation, whether you're out West here in the Midwest, East, 
and there's folks that have more of an advantage depending on the property and deer density. But even if you don't, you can generally like the old days, knock on a door and get permission to find sheds, you know, because there's not, not as many hunters, not, it's not as challenging to get permission. Like if you were to knock yeah, on a door, deer it's hunt. more, it'd be closer to be like saying, Hey, there's a bird migration going on and there's a, you know, I'm having, trying to have a big year. If that's, yep. everyone remember that movie there? Yeah. Yep, right. Yep, trying yep. To bird watch. Like it's such a low barrier of entry. There's no ethics involved. To, I mean, sure. There probably are, I guess, if someone to challenge me on that, but like, don't trust best. Go pick up a shit, I guess. But you're not killing anything. It's something that's fallen off. Like, hey, can I go search your property to look for antlers? That's a pretty low key ask. It's even lower a key than we've talked about knocking on doors in the white tail world and how like a foot in the door might be going to ask for turkeys instead. And usually get a yes there before you get a yes for deer. Um, but Boys. like the, the next rung down from that might be shed hunting yeah. or bird watching. I well, don't know. Farmers um, love you for it too because tires are expensive to replace. So Indeed, they are. We all know at least one farmer. At least yep. I see dead. a picture yep. every year. Someone yeah. run over a shed. I'm like, the John Deere ran over an antler. Yep. Yeah. And then at that point, they're probably pretty annoyed. They're not like, cool, no, it, look at this big shed. They're like, Son of dude, a it man. ruins their day. Days it does. takes time away from what they're going to get done because everything is weather permitting and you're trying to fit things in. And it's it's expensive to replace. And those antlers are tough, mm -hmm. as you guys know. I mean, they, they don't really like to give. Bone. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's that's a good point i hadn't thought about the i mean i've thought about it because i've seen around but you talk about like the weather implications i only i can only have to get this done in the next four days or whatever and that would put oh it run things now now they might be mad at you if you've gone out and shed hunting and you didn't find they still running over They're like what the hell man i thought you were yeah. shed hunting <laughs> well you didn't invite the okay as hunter to come <laughs> look so i can't guarantee it's any good this isn't like that, uh, what is that, space balls where they're combing the thing through yes. the desert? Like, yeah, we don't got one of those. Yeah. Unfortunately. But they're still holding. Like, I've been hearing and seeing some people started to tag us even before we announced this contest that, like, there's there's definitely some bucks still holding. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's. I mean, Greg, what, what are you seeing? You're, yeah. So we're in Wisconsin, you're in Indiana. We're not that far apart, but, like, I think we're relatively in a, a pretty similar geo area, the Midwest. Yeah. Uh, Greg, you going first? You want me to go? Yeah, I can just say that the majority of the mature bucks that I've gotten on camera, I think I've gotten on camera because I can just tell by body size and the size of their noggin, no antlers on. But, you know, those three to one year old deer that have, you know, the spiker from the the, the nice eight pointer, yep. uh, they're still holding, still running around, chasing around, doing deer things with uh, with antlers on their head. So... I posted a video just recently on my story. I didn't post it on my page or anything, but there was uh, three bucks that came running in. One had both antlers, which was, you know, the year and a half or two year old. And there was like a three year old there with one antler. And then there was the bigger body deer that came squirting through big bald spots on his head and no antlers. So that's where we're at. You know, it, <clears throat> I've had years where I've been out in that marsh in April and still got eight pointers out there We're running around both sides, hanging on. It might've been a week later they dropped, but 60 degree weather running around out there in a t-shirt <laughs> and kicking up bucks with, with both sides on them still. It's crazy. And then you hear stories of people that'll shoot them late season and they go to do their grip and grin and they fall off fall right off. Well, and you know, then what I, do you, how do you tag one of those if that's well, <laughs> well, I shot it, it was a buck and I went up to it and it wasn't. What yeah, do I do it's now? A, it's a gray yeah. area. Or it's always eight. past tense on those, right? Ant antlered. Mm -hmm. Antlered. Past tense. There you go. So, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, that is a different topic altogether. Yeah. If it's ant, if it's not a certain length of antler, you count it as a female. It's a dope antlerless. It doesn't. Right. Yeah. Or antler or antlerless, but it's kind of like, well, does he got nuts or not? You know, if, you want to, <laughs> if we do, we shoot a doe or do we shoot a male deer? There's your, there's your know. okayest tag. Like, the, come on, DNR, get it together. Did he have a pair of balls or not? <laughs> like that's what we should be. Right. We're talking about herd management population. Yeah, huh? I mean, for situations like this, well, look at your tag. Off. Though, they could be if you small. look at your tag, I know what they say. I'm just saying it. I like where he's going with it, Greg. I like strange. it. I mean, it's I know, I know where I'm you're going, new... Greg, but I like where he's going. I have a new gear to grind, you know, that's yeah. all. Just, just 
happened right now. That's you fine. Heard it first here. <laughs> I'm gonna go to the next DNR hearing and say and start lobbying. You know what I want? <laughs> I want my tape to say balls or no balls. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Or I I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, you were going to talk about how it's going down by you. Are you running cams out there? What I just see? recently shut the cams down, um, but got a bunch of buddies running them. But we were 30, 50% high, more than a 30, 30 plus per, percent holding, I'd say. Um, just shooting from the hip in our area. Um, but we, the, it started early overall this year because of the mild winter. A lot of people with the weather turning were getting out sooner. So that kind of escalated the start of shed season because we normally hold and start February 14th uh, is generally when we kick it off Valentine's day, something to look forward to. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah, but there were people out racing around in January, scooping up sheds. So, which they do shed potentially into Dece in December if they're sick or something. Um, and January, even healthy deer sometimes shed in January. So it's, it's interesting and it's fun to see where people are at, what they're finding, when they're finding, how they're finding them. It's, it's just fun to consume all of that. And Dwayne, one tip we just threw out there, Dwayne found a match set that his buddy had on trail camera 10 days prior to him finding the set. Now we don't know if those sheds fell off that deer's head that day or days later, but when he found them within that 10 day window, one side of the antler was chewed so bad. The G3 is about ready to fall off. The G4 was chewed through quite a bit and he was gnawed on a bunch of squirrels, but that quick. So just like, those are fun little things to know, obviously motivate you to get out there and find them before they're trashed, but, or chewed up, but that's in Illinois. That's in Indiana right here. Oh, okay. Well, Indiana, Illinois, I think you guys all have a, certain breed of fox squirrel that just has a hankering for uh deer shells well, they're, uh, they're Derek, hungry this time of year Derek know? and i always joke like he finds some sheds in illinois and they're all chewed to bits you know like literally they couldn't have been off the deer's head for more than a, a day and they're we joked that the squirrel probably tackled the deer in the head and took the antler off and started chewing on it midair <laughs> yeah. but they're uh, they're pretty pretty vicious. They're pretty voracious when it comes to uh, chewing up sheds. Yeah, they're uh, they're they're definitely tree rats for sure. Shed rats. Yep. Yeah, not, not enough people shooting them. Not like they used to. No, but they yeah they it was just an interesting because we had the facts. So it's interesting to know that because you're always guessing. So, so. Oh, this must have fell a long time ago. It's pretty chewed up, you know. But no, that, like, yeah, that happened like a couple days ago. Literally, days, days. Yeah. So crazy. But that's why, yeah, I know it. So, um, you want me to get into shed season more? Or do you have another question topic? What are you thinking? I don't think so. I think that's good. I mean, um, I don't know, just kind of we're kind of just milling around here a little bit, browsing on whatever, whatever twigs that you know presenting themselves to us as we walk about the forest here. But the, the cam thing is interesting because if you have that kind of intel, you can make those moves. So then what I find fascinating there, I mean, I'm just all over the place right now, guys, but like if cell cams are being banned in certain states, I don't know how far that forest fire is going to spread um, or if that's going to be all trail cams and cell cams. There's a lot of technology stuff, but those cell cam companies, the trail cam companies that are offering cell cams got to be feel pretty happy about that's a reason to leave them out longer. You know, to see who's still holding, who's not. If they dropped, I better go out there and get them. I think that's a pretty cool use of a cell cam, uh, to be quite frank. Like, if you had cell cams out, I would, add, I would advocate maybe using cell cams for shed season more so than hunting season. If you want to get into the ethics of, like, fair chase and all that jazz, it'd be really cool to when a buck dropped a, a shed so you could go retrieve it before the squirrels get it or someone else does. I think it's a pretty cool use case. And I have a fun story about that, but for later. Well, <clears throat> I mean, how much later? Well, I don't know. I also had a thought the other day because uh, my ring doorbell goes off a lot during the day, um, like whether it's the UPS or the FedEx or the mail or my kids or the cat or there's just a lot of activity on my ring doorbell and the battery lasts pretty damn long. It's a battery effort. It's not wired in. I'm like, man, my battery and my ring doorbell lasts for like months and it's hot, like it's running hot. Like, there's a lot of activity, you know? 
every time a car goes by because i have it set pretty wide like it'll still you know hey action or motion alert and uh i have this funny thing that i do with my wife at least once a day i scare the living shit out of her <laughs> and the ring doorbell has given me more opportunities to do that so like she'll be doing something i'll just quietly appear and she will not know that i have appeared and she'll turn and you know it's not good it's hilarious for me it sucks for her but then she'll be walking the house and like hey what are you doing she's like oh my god why and she'll like drop stuff and it's just epic she's probably already having a bad day it's not really nice of me but yeah it keeps things fresh. <laughs> It's not like you know, keeps her in her toes. At what point are cell cams going to offer that level of technology? It's already like, are some already doing it? Wouldn't it be funny to scare a squirrel? Ew. Could you scare the sheds off it? I mean, that, that's highly unethical because now you're disturbing wildlife. Yeah, I mean, that's the difference between a security camera and a, a cell but like, camera. Who like, said you couldn't put a security camera in the woods? Do you want to go live? Do you want to pay for that data bill? I don't know. I'm just I wondering don't. a data bill on my ring doorbells. A dollar, you know, not not through uh, Scout Tech or any of those other companies. I don't know. It's just there's, you know, you got Bill Thompson with Spartan Forge who talked about wiring up the woods at some point in time before Spartan Forge had become what it was. He was tinkering with all this technology to like trip wires and stuff. Of course, a very militant man doing that. But I hope that some lines of ethics get drawn here sooner than later to prevent something like happening. But meanwhile, I could have a little fun talking about it. Uh, for those types of use cases but like if someone's going to steal your trail cam or your cell cam they walk up to you like hey f off man it's mine back off i know who you are i got your face like you could thwart off some thieves <laughs> i don't know i don't teach like i don't know man i'm not sure how to touch this one uh, not here for the controversy it, yeah it's 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 gray area for sure it it's it's it, I mean, at some point, it would be almost considered hazing wildlife if you're going to be it would. yelling at it through a camera. Well, I mean, right. I don't have to go the hazing route, but I, that's where my mind went. But yeah, then we got the drones. Could you? Who's who's using a drone to find sheds? That has to be ethical because you're not hunting. It's not hunting season. And if you want to just fly a drone, like how good are those things are? How good are they? it? Looks like sticks, probably. I don't that know. Could you thing. identify a shed? And that could be a thing too with with uh, chasing wildlife around. You know, we start running around looking for antlers in january well those deer are trying to recover at that point from you know a hard breeding season and then maybe we're going into the, one of the coldest months of the year where and possibly the snowiest depending this year not so much i mean we had snow but you're putting added stress on animals and i think that's why out west they have an actual shed season in some states oh well and remember you guys were in illinois you couldn't take anything off the land right is that a thing so you can't take sheds from illinois what's the deal can you can it you depends not? on the property Pro private property you can if it's state land you're not supposed to you're supposed to leave that right where it is i'm sure iowa doesn't do that i don't know you it's like a mecca cons consult the regs and then you got we had land trust on the podcast was that three weeks ago mm -hmm. they're an airbnb-esque platform for access so you could book public access on private property through their application. <clears throat> I mean, that might be a good way to get on some land without having to knock on a door to go get some sheds. Might be untouched completely, you know? So just thinking, I don't know, I'm just getting oddly creative about, how about to, you know. How, how, how bad do you want to find a shed? I, yeah. I, I'm i more to TJ's point. I'm more about like cabin fever has set in pretty heavily in our home. Everyone's been sick on and off. Need to get the heck outside. Got to find an excuse for it. That being said, though, we did have, uh, I think, six ticks on between their two dogs. I didn't find any of myself. You found one on yourself. Yeah. It's March, and we're finding ticks. Well, yeah, it was 72 degrees and balmy out. I mean, crazy. I'm starting to get a little color on my forearms. <laughs> farmer you know? Greg. Yeah, getting the farmer tan going here. Our phone lines are open. If you want to call in and tell us if you're finding sheds, tell us what state you're in, what you're seeing. Are they holding? Are they dropping? Are you finding them? Are they droopy? I don't know. Um. <laughs> are they droopy? <laughs> wow. Now oh, you're yeah. grabbing at straws. Well, I suppose they don't. They don't dangle. They just fall. That's so, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, the artwork you guys did for your for your merch for shed seasons about as cool as I've seen in a long time from any brand. That's really good. Thank job. you. you no, it, great. That work. would be that would be Brad Beaver and then um, uh, Claire um, from Missouri. So her link is on 
you go to shedseason.com, you can see all that stuff and enter our giveaways and follow along. But anyway, we got a link there to her artwork. She's super, super talented. Um, so we were fortunate to work with her. She did a lot of cool stuff this year. That's yeah, that's great. And it translated well into a digital form and like a physical form of like putting on a hat. Yeah. It just yeah, the Greg's hat's cool. That's a, is that the Cracker Barrel? That is Brad did that one. That's a modified Casey's. So it's, Casey's. It, uh-huh. he put the I say rather than the rooster, there's a there's an actual lamp yeah. around there. It's pretty yep. awesome. That'd be Bradley. Unfortunately, he's uh he's too good, so people don't really care anymore. Sorry, Brad, if you're listening. It's, it's... <laughs> <laughs> people don't care anymore. People don't forget. <laughs> no, he's we. He's been a part of Rack Hub since we started. Therefore, working on shed season, and we get to work with him on a bunch of things with different brands. But he, yeah, he's been huge to have. And like I mentioned, Dwayne Jones. He's the only reason shed season exists is because Dwayne, when he moved back from out east, I want to say three ish years ago, he signed up for the crazy of being community manager for it. Um, so he's he's in it every day. So it's intense. It's it's just grown so much and like you does would Brad run out of creativity at some point? Like do you is it is it just an endless well with it's that just guy? an endless well. I keep face? thinking, but I've known the kid since remember when he started White Taylor? You remember that brand? Yeah. What happened to White Taylor? He the sold way? the rights to it, just getting too busy on all the things. But that's where he got started oh, cool. essentially. And then um, you know, we chatted on that brand when he got started and then of course that was his. It was so good. Damn makes it. Makes sense, right? It's yeah, still relevant. Not. I mean, years later, it'd still be relevant <laughs> as heck. Um, but no, he, so that's how we, he, he went to the same high school as me, just a lot, a lot younger. Um, but we, we synced up on that and then got him, got him involved in Rack Hub and he's helped guide us and still a part of the team. We got a bunch of other guys and gals involved too now. Um, Are you guys going to get any more of the wood? pedestal back in for so yes for rack hub what's the so story this, there? you can see it here um is one of them but we're we're we need to tidy up our operations so we've had three or four different manufacturers there it's more of a it, it's it's we've got specific dimensions we need to hold it to for repeatability turn it into a business right and it fits in our shipping box that we use it weighs what it should weigh all the stipulations so it's repeatable What we found is that because it's wood, some people are unhappy with maybe the wood grain that comes in when they get it, or it's just not quite the finish they thought it should be. So we've had returns and it's really not when you penciled out your end, it's not worth it right now. So we're trying to get, get those tidied up and we might just do a drop like, Hey, there's 10 available. If you love Walnut, it's no returns, you know, buy it's yours kind of deal. Obviously if it's, chipped or broken of sorts which is rare for that with how we package them we'll take care of you we always do no matter what order of product we'll take care of you but we might somebody that would do a a fine job of building something like that oh yeah we we do know a guy there you go you you let me know but we would probably do it that way where it's just um or we just put put a disclaimer in there with like whatever that verbiage is we tidied up i'm not good with words with you know, final buy kind of deal. I think that the, the drop thing is going to be Montana knife has made a business out of supply and demand. Mm-hmm. They, they control the supply and then they control the demand to some degree by controlling the supply where they'll just do drops, 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 yep. drops. And like, once it's done, it's done. And that's the thing. And now, now that one's done, like, and which would then creates a lot of demand because you, maybe you really want that one, yep. you know, and who knows when they're going to come out again and so forth. So that model certainly works like if you were to do that i'm assuming you'd sell if it was 10 or 20 you'd probably move them all like that that pedestal was the reason i brought up is you're talking about brad i don't know if he was the one that did that photography work for you guys i'm assuming it was him or someone of equivalent talent it was really different than anything i'd ever seen and that's where out of the gate i think i expressed to you like man it's pretty bougie yep like i don't know the okay as hunter stuff like that's pretty bougie for us but then we learned there's more that meets the eye and what you bring to market. But that one, nonetheless, is very striking and arresting. That pedestal thing is really cool. Someone shared it with it as a book. Uh, bookend. Bookend or something. It was cool. I was like, ooh. And it's, 
I, I now I want that <laughs> like because I I I do love all my books. So and it, it the reason we even started is it can be stressful to be like, ah, should I put it on this wall or I don't know. Maybe it should go on this wall with a pedestal. You can move it around, take it to work, throw it in your office, put it on a coffee table, wherever. I mean, it's endless, and you can. You don't have to. You don't have to worry about finding wall space or screwing into a wall that somebody doesn't want you putting holes in. Yeah, we're yep. running out of room in this. And <laughs> well, you don't have much. Yeah, to, you're getting pretty pretty a little over tight here. in there, but and it's kind of nice. They always look bigger from the back, right? So being able to see walk around. I don't know if I can reach with my headphones and spin it here, but being able to see it from the back view you know if you got it is a more more of a centerpiece it's kind of sweet to be able to walk around them take it a different yeah. view yeah no. yeah that's we, rare you don't get that on a, a shoulder mount typically no bit. and like i said they're removable so you can pop them off you said those were 200 inches i didn't believe you oh. but now that you move yeah. to the back i think i see it oh okay so stay buddy here's here's the spike they're they're exactly in line. <laughs> so you didn't even bring the drop tie inside no. either. So it's there, there's a little Don't difference. Draw. Yeah, there's a lot of difference. <laughs> that's a beer can against the yeah, pencil. I've got a ten inch ten inch reach here, and that's like fourteen or so. So yeah, it's it's a giant. It's an absolute giant. Yours? Then like it's your like. I assume it is. This came but... from a deer farm, but just for us during testing when we first started, had a buddy that gave us this match set, but it looks wild. So it's it's pretty cool. To... He gave it he gave yeah, it to you? Solid guy, right? Oh well, who gives away 200 inches worth of antler? Tell me more about the, the deer farmer. Solid yeah. guy. Eh, Can't I'll give plenty too of many more there. details for you there. But yeah. next year that'll be 225. I so. got a buddy that's got a he's got a deer farm. So, but they, I think they make a killing with the antlers though, too. Like the, his basement floor is just, it's, it's all, 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 all antlers. I'm like, I bet you there's a, yeah, I guess there probably is a pretty big market. Yeah, for they that, got so. two year olds that break 200 all the time. So it's, it's crazy. It's a whole different world, but it, it's nice to show um, for us because it's not one of those, I've got a 350 inch over here. That's got points everywhere that it's obvious as a deer farm deer. So this is nice to show that, and that will hold some decent size antlers. Some mess, when, yeah, you know, because it is something you would question for sure. Like, will it hold my deer? I don't know. Yeah. Well, if you're asking that question, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. probably listening to the wrong podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool, like getting kids out and stuff like that. Like, I'll, I'll, I want my kids are sick and they just they can't walk two feet without coughing up a lung, so they didn't go out with me. I want my plan was to go on my birthday by myself. And actually look and get into some hard to get places and then go back out just later in the day and say we're shed hunting and go off trail like a little bit. And then they were just wrecked. They were just so sick. So it's just been a you can hear it even my voice now a little bit. I'm, you know, probably not a hundred percent, but certainly not what it was like over the weekend. But uh getting the kids out involved in that stuff and just snooping and pooping in the woods is it's just so great. And there's no pressure with the shed hunting. Like you said, you can be loud. It doesn't really matter. The kids can do whatever. It's like, who cares? Who cares? The thing I'm concerned about is the damn ticks. They're picking those things up. Yeah, but you got those year round. I mean, so it doesn't matter if it's shed season or spring turkey or mushroom. Morel mushroom, morel mushroom and turkey are pretty freaking awful. Yes, we had agreed. 60 ticks on us the one time yeah. we went out amongst our family. I was like, oh, my God. How many do we not get? Yeah, well, that's, yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah, but there's yeah fun. Speaking of technology, like I think Sitka's got like Equinox or something now, or they don't they they don't get to you anymore. You know, there's the permethrin I spray on my clothes and little sires. Little sires goes a long way. There's a lot of these uh, materials that are coming out now that that stuff's kind of like woven into the fabric. I'm all about it. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I've heard stories. I think you might have heard the same story <laughs> that I have. The I mean, it's not podcast worthy. We're not even going to begin to talk about it, but it's like about as bad as it could possibly ever get with a tick. Yeah. Yeah. I think about that fell so. off. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because that story, I probably do too. I'm like, oh man, no thanks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no thanks. That's how I'd word that. Chronicles of places ticks don't belong. Yeah. yeah well, <laughs> maybe guess here, but. Um... <laughs> 
crazy. Nope. Uh, hashtag uh, okay a shed. So if you already have some content, go back and throw a hashtag on it if you want yeah. to. If you already posted and you're like, man, I posted yesterday and I heard about this today, go back and add a hashtag. I think we'll count yeah, it. Yeah, you can go back uh, and edit it. You know, that's okay. But um, anything going forward between that date? Well, uh, the cutoff will be the 15th. So on the 15th, we'll cut it off, uh, do the tallying and all that jazz and and do a draw. So I, I expect a little bit of buffer time after that closeout before we get into announcing. We'll probably do it on podcast night again. So give a little bit of buffer between when that ends and when we go and announce everything. But if you want to get covered up in some uh, rack cub and shed season, OKS Hunter product, merch, swag, whatever you want to call it, that's all you got to do. And it sounds pretty simple to me. I hate the giveaways where it's like, you know, they're like a cell phone contract. Well, you, you got to get the rebate. To get the rebate, you got to buy it this way, at this store, at this time, at this. Well, you can't do that. But you got to do this. Well, you, you know, make sure you tie your shoes, but not both at the same time. And it's just like, holy shit. Man. No, you should have to tie them at the same time. <laughs> well, maybe that's you're what pretty it is. freaking talented. But you got to read the fine print just to be sure you read it right. There's none of that going on here. It would be helpful if you followed all this, though. I would add, like, you should probably follow all the pages. That'd be ideal. I don't think we had that as a prerequisite, so. No, but. <laughs> because we wanted to make it easy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. But it yes. would go a long way. It might help you. Who knows? Yeah, it might, you might figure out, hey, Tommy down the road, they just found a shed. Maybe I should go poach his spot. <laughs> or shit. He's got all the sheds in that area. Shouldn't go yep. there. Look at it how you want. Everyone's got their lens. That's uh, that's the lens I would take is not to go there. But uh, someone else is like, oh, I better go there. People stealing fishing spots and stuff. Looking at photos on the internet. I know where that house is. I know where that tree yep. is. That literally happened to me. Someone said they saw, they recognized a tree in a photo. I was like, you kidding me? Get the hell out of here. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the messages that followed afterwards. My dad did that to me once. We were driving up north and he's like, I know where we are. I recognize that tree. And I was like, what? He's like, I'm not serious. I was like, well, I don't know. Maybe you yeah. are. Like, what do I know? I've never been up here before. Maybe you know that tree well. <laughs> yeah. You don't question him. No, no. Crazy. And then moments later, I think we went off the road and got into a rut. So pretty scary to go off the road up there. But uh, uh, TJ, thanks for joining us tonight. My energy levels are low dealing with whatever the heck bare bone sickness that I have here. But uh, I'm more excited to be working with you guys. It's It's been a pleasure even so far, and it's only been a little bit of time. Um, I hope that I find some more sheds. I would like to get more use out of the stuff. And the pedestal has me very interested, so I'd be one of those guys on the drop that probably try to pull the trigger right away. Yeah, no. We'll bring them back. We will. And just to add clarity here to the end, it, it you know, it like I said, we started out for sheds, but you find a deadhead that, you know, you don't want to deal with the smell or, the skull's too far gone. You can simply cut the antlers off or, um, you know, and throw them on an RH2 again within minutes, or it's a kid's first deer. You know, it doesn't make sense to pay for a shoulder mount. That's what that, this was actually a, one of those situations. This guy's just a spike that we cut off and you can mount that memory and it's an affordable way to do it. Uh, we, you know, we take pride in, in what we do and the product, uh, um, is quality. If you got issues, we'll, we'll ship you a new one. Um, but that that's rare. And, uh, it's just like you were mentioned on the pictures, I guess we're not exclusive. Like it's not like we just try and represent the product well with the imagery, but it doesn't mean we're exclusive and premium and we're an arms open company and it doesn't matter. Shed. Yeah. Cut nailers off. You can mount a spike all the way up to as big as they grow and everywhere in between. And, um, you know, with what's going on in the economy, it's actually, it's interesting how it happened, but it, it's now an affordable option. Um, so it's, it's been good and we appreciate, but like I said, all the love and support and we're, we're honored to be working with you guys, Eric, we go back a few years now building this relationship, but it, it just makes sense for where we're going. And, um, I think it'd be great for, for your mission, where you guys are headed, uh, it makes complete sense for us as well. So. Yeah, I, I echo that all. I actually, as you were talking, I developed one more question. Perfect. Um, I'm assuming some folks might cringe at the idea of cutting antlers off, but you, you talk about like finding a deadhead where the skull's gone or things like that. There's going to be examples that are going to shine brighter than others in that context. But when you cut them off, like I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the um, 
year I'm going to have over here. Like, you need to cut below, what is this called, Greg? The pedicle. You need to cut below the pedicle, right? So Correct. You're, you're, yeah. So yeah. You're not cutting above. You, nope. You want to cut here. So you just got to get in there real good. Mm-hmm. And then maybe there's a little bit of cleanup or something like that. But because you want to see that full pedicle antler, the full antler, you don't want to cut above it. And I just want to clarify that because in my mind, I'm like, man, it would look janky if you cut the antlers off. But I'm like, oh, well, you just cut below the pedicle. But it just took me a second to get there in my mind. Sorry. Uh, we got a lot of pushback in the beginning because it is scary to do those things. But if you would peel the hide back on your shoulder mounts there, Eric, they're, they cut the skull plate off the skull. They used mm-hmm. some sort of a, a filler, quick creep bondo. I don't know. I'm not a taxidermist, but to, to get the form proper with the skull plate and underneath it. And then they used some, drilled some holes in the plate to run screws into that, into the form. Like it, no matter, There's a lot of work that goes into and no it. Ma- yeah. And no matter what form of taxidermy you're using, you know, saws and drills and power tools to do it, it's, so it's, it's a common thing. It's just something that you don't really think about or talk about. Uh, and, but that's why we, when we started, we constrained ourselves to put a tiny hole as minimal as we could actually pull it off to where it'll hold the antlers. Um, and you can swap antlers, you know, if you find a new shed or kill something else. Yeah. Flavor of the week. Like maybe yep. my cherished memory of the one shed I ever found will get demoted. If I ever found another It'll one. happen. That would trump that. It'll memory. happen. It'll happen. <laughs> then I can just swap it out, or I'll just buy another one and stick it somewhere else. Like, and we great. sell non-ball joint products. We call them antler bars, where it's just it's essentially like a lag bolt with the hex feature on top. So you can, it's more more affordable than the ball joint. You just have to drill. You have to install it in your pedestal or beam or wall mm-hmm. at the angle you want it to end up at. Um, so it's. Which sounds like not my kind. Oh, you could person. do it, Eric. If Greg's there, I was if... very happy to just mirror, mirror. like I had this dude when I got it. I was so excited. I was like, I gotta go do this right now. My wife's like, what? I didn't expect you to do something like this right now. I was like, no, no, it's easy. They even gave me the drill bit. Watch, I'll be right back. You know, it's no big deal. So, did you go into the paper grocery bag you call a toolbox <laughs> in the closet above the hamster cage to get it? <laughs> no, no, I have a real toolbox now. No, Greg. Some might Greg, say is it one of those? Pink, no, man, I'm using is it one of those pink cases that has it, the cute little hammer? It might and... actually be a recycled pink tackle yeah. box. From no, no, his that, that's not a tackle box. That's called a caboodle. Mm-hmm. It's a tackle box. Yeah. Van, Van I hear you, Greg. Was the caboodle yep. one? I got mm-hmm. you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, yep. guys. Appreciate it. But it's an upgrade from when he first moved here. Like I had, I had to Greg's fix like, something. I'm gonna fix something. I had to fix something on his furnace for him. I had the heat going. You know, <laughs> couldn't see a family go without heat. Right. So, I go in and uh, so I ask his wife kindly, I said, Hey, does he have a screwdriver and a hammer? You know, just a couple of basic hand tools, slip joint pliers. Well, he's got some tools. I don't know what he has. All right, let's see him. Well, come over here. Okay. I'm, I'm expecting we would go in the garage to get tools, right? Because right? that's the proper place to put tools or maybe a workspace <laughs> down in the basement. No, we go into the laundry room in the closet above where the, I called them hamsters earlier, guinea pigs are currently, and there's a shelf. And on the shelf is a grocery bag. It is a paper grocery (laughs) bag. And she said, these are all of his tools. I'm a real man. I'm a real boy. I'm a real (laughs) real boy. (laughs) So (laughs) inside is some what some would consider I'm hand tools. this guy back to the seat the <laughs> yeah and so i made do with what i had i got the furnace tore apart cleaned out the condensate trap cleaned the f- flame sensor and got the heat going again and all is well in the world but paper bag buddy paper bag yeah yeah that was a dark day for me hey mm. craig had his laugh oh i do I, now have, I have a laugh two, i have two toolboxes now and they're slightly and organized. he still doesn't know where Greg, they are we, we need to change our marketing this just hit me we just need to put eric's face on the site and just say this guy can do <laughs> oh. it so no worries this, this <laughs> guy can do it. it's so simple and eric can do it 
You know, Gary Turner can do it. He give you all the tools to not mess this up. Uh, I mean, there's when a I drill, saw the bit, drill in the bit there. Bag. I was relieved. I was like, I was, I was that consumer. I mean, there's I everything like, short of a drill and a Phillips, a number mostly, two Phillips. In I'm here. mostly happy I got a new drill. Bit all the parts the you need to do this project are yep. in here. If you need a new drill, bit, just go, just go to Rack Hub and, and they'll find <laughs> yeah. it. Oh, yep, yep. You'll get an RH2 or one or whatever with it. But the directions were clear though. Like I, yeah. I did take some photos and uh, you know laid it all out, and I, I tried to be intentional about what i include there because the directions i'm the guy that will not i'll, I'll miss a detail that's important yep. and and i'm like shit i think i missed a step it's usually and, and now i've gotten really screen. good at it because i'm like no no there's always a step that i mess up so now i'm really good about reading instructions and your instructions were really yep. really it's, well it's done a, it's ikea with a little bit more verbiage you know that's all it is so a good point yeah. and we yeah. and higher quality and we uh <laughs> so if you order this was the latest brochure bradley did it for us but this is uh how simple you know it it, it really is drill tap meaning tap and insert and then display so yep. one two three drill tap display so maybe we need to get you wrapping that and we'll just push that out at audio um ad there's a did you have you seen these um these uh duck hunting dudes from down south 24 yes i'm aware of them yep them. One of them, or all of them, I'm not really sure. I'm fairly new to them. I enjoy their content, but they they put their own rap song together for for shooting ducks, and it's like their podcast intro because they have a podcast. Like if you could get a rap song, maybe from those there guys that says, you know, drill, tap, display. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. I mean, I'm not a rapper, so you don't want to hear me do it. No, we we want to hear I, you. No, I, th I think we yeah, want to hear we, you. We, I can. Yeah. I don't know if you guys know this, but I can beatbox. That's not rapping. Though. Okay, but just words and actions yeah. speak louder. It's worth, yeah. Action, yeah. speak louder. Let's hear it. <laughs> I can do more. Yeah, but like you're I'm turning not gonna... red. You're, you look a little embarrassed because yeah. it. it's not something I do very often. <laughs> I know. When you're pursing the lips, right. You got those little bird lips. <laughs> <laughs> My kids like it when I beatbox, so I keep, I keep, I hold on to that uh, one skill that I have that I learned a long time ago. <laughs> but, but, but I tell you, I did have some guys start on some raps to my beatboxing that were pretty good at rapping, and it was actually a pretty fun little ordeal. Hmm. So, believe I could beatbox a buck in. That could be. It'd probably a be a first. It. I feel like if I did a commercial well, he, for you guys, he might like... have done it without realizing it in just a different manner, <laughs> like by dropping his release down his tree and watching it hit yeah. every it, branch on the way. Yep. Have you guys ever seen the Red House commercial, the Red House furniture commercial on YouTube? Just ring a bell. It, Rhett and Link were, there was a YouTube duo, these two dudes called Rhett and Link, and they put out a commercial for a furniture store called the Red House Furniture. It was a real place. And they made the worst commercial you've ever seen in your life. And because it was so bad, intentionally, they made it to be intentionally bad. It was not, nothing about it was not intentional. And they put these bad commercials out and it went like, before you could go viral, they went viral. In the most bit, like ridiculous way, and they actually got to. I think they're on the Tonight Show. They got pretty famous from these shitty commercials that they're putting out. I feel like I would be one of those shitty commercials. Could go viral. Just beatboxing in the background and saying, you know, drill tap display. <laughs> <laughs> it would just be so awful. But that that's we're, what would we're going to get about you it. digging all of your tools out of the, <laughs> out paper, of the paper bag. bag. <laughs> Look, you only need a couple tools. <laughs> Greg. Good luck with that one. I'm sorry. I'm I'm going to need it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, that was good. That was a good show. I enjoyed this. And uh, that was fun. Go enter the contest. Start uploading your photos of your sheds. You want to see them. The small ones are harder to find. This is our mm -hmm. time to shine as okay as hunters. There's nothing wrong with the 150 or, or bigger. I don't, that's all great. I would, I mean, but if you can find a button buck, <sighs> you are. <clears throat> You are looking real close. Mm -hmm. You are a needle. I know where there were kind of quite guy. a few living, but the chances of finding a button from the buck, not very high. Some people have, though. They've shown it looks oh, like yes. a shark tooth. It's so little, it's you know. Little. It's teeny tiny. I mean, that would have to be tagged as an antlerless deer, which is bullshit. <laughs> we're back. Because we know. <laughs> 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 we're back. Yep. Where we began and where we've ended. Uh, well, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I think I got some music. Is this music? Yeah, we'll do that. We'll end the music stuff here. It's kind of fun. Well, what else is going on? We're going to be at the uh, Wisconsin Dells Open Season Trade Show. You will. Me be and Tyler and Matt and Jeff uh, from UpDuck will be there. Oh, cool. You got a fourth. 
yep um my dad might stop by a couple buddies might stop by but we're, we're at a different booth i said a booth last week we got moved into the big room what uh i can't remember the booth number right now up in the big house but we're in the big Phew. room now uh we got we got called up to the big leagues and we were like hey we'll moving yeah. on up huh? actually greg i talked to you about this because oh, our it's a it's the reverse here it's we the go. mirror of how our booth is set up right I'm now going to be booth building once well again. you said our booth is ambidextrous so it, it should is. be fine it is if you know how to use a drill which you don't know <laughs> and drill bits which at least you don't i have, have some drill bits now the from, paper bag is not a magical black up. hole anywho so we'll be there uh that's the only that we we're tossing the idea right now, right now, trying to plan to see if we'll do the Mobile Hunter Expo in Kalamazoo. What? We're gonna go to the. We're gonna go to Kazoo. Yeah, it is a zoo there. I think. Not. I the, think it'd be a good the, place on Forest, honestly. Well, but, it'll be fun. I'll tell way. you more about it. Uh, plans are unfolding, and when would that it's be? Summer, summer, like end of July. Ooh boy, last baby. week in July. That is. Might need a truck. <laughs> Bluey can't tell <laughs> right things. away. He looks at this guy. Just saying. Uh, I think Foam Fest. I mean, Foam Fest will be happening. I think I got to get that. I I don't start planning until after March, so that'll, right. that'll come soon. Uh, uh, I know I have a work trip in July, so to be continued. We'll talk some more. All right, adios, everybody. Thanks, thank you, thank you guys. Thanks for tuning in. See you.